ladies and gentlemen today we will discuss the 11th lecture on third module on the course ocean structures and materials under the basis of NPTEL IIT Madras. In this lecture we will discuss new materials which are applied and used for coastal protection structures and also we discuss some code classification of materials how they have been selected and recommended by various international courts for offshore applications. Let us first talk about different new methods and materials being applied for coastal protection structures. Geosynthetic tubes as we saw in the last lecture are also more frequently being used as breakwaters which prevent soil being eroded by waves and current. Geosynthetic tubes shall also be used as artificial dunes, reefs, dynes or groins. In this lecture I will show a case study photograph where the width of the groin has been extended using a geosynthetic tube. Soft tain tubes are one of the most such common application being widely used in practice. Soft tain are nothing but geo tubes which are manufactured by Husker Synthetic GmbH Germany where you can see the references from this specific website. Now, let us see what are those technical factors which will govern or which will show advantages of using new materials like geotubes for coastal protection structures. Geosynthetic tubes are hydraulically filled with slurry of sand and water. The schematic figure of the tube being used as a breakwater with scour apron and anchoring tubes will be shown to you in the following figure. You can see here this is a geosynthetic tube which is filled with slurry and sand which is acting as a temporary breakwater along the groins. The embankment which is built with the geosynthetic tube is what you see in the photograph. You can see another photograph which shows a schematic view of how the geosynthetic tube can be used in addition to an anchoring tube and a scour apron as they are required in case of breakwaters. So, you can see here that the new novel material like geosynthetic tubes which has been started applications in breakwaters as anchoring tubes as well as cover aprons to protect soil erosion along the beach side. They also have multiple applications as you see in the literature. For example, you can also have breakwaters which are submerged below the low tide level using geosynthetic tubes as you see in the figure which can be a near shore application. For the foreshore application lines can again use them as shore protection as you see in this location. In case you want to protect them back shore you can also use them as artificial dunes which are covered with a rubble mounted mass which are again covered with beautiful natural vegetation on the upland. So, geosynthetic tubes in the recent practices have been applied and attempted to be tried in submerged breakwaters as shore protection structural systems and also for artificial dunes so that they have multiple applications in the recent past. Let us look at breakwaters with armor protection which has been recently attempted with geosynthetic tubes. The inner core of the breakwater of jetty can be geosynthetic tube which is filled with sand and water. This can be laid 
on a geosynthetic foundation mattress to drain away the eroded water. There will be an anchor tube on the land side which is laid on a scour apron. The rock fill core will be protected by the geotextile cover over which the rock armor is placed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the recent application which has been used in Australia. This is a geosynthetic tube which is covered by a rock armor as you see in the top and below the rock armor which covers the geosynthetic layer we have got a geotextile. HATE is a branded name of a geotextile which actually represent woven and non-woven geotextiles for separation and effective filtration of water when they fly over or flow over this arrangement. On the anchor side you have got HATE which is specially woven non-woven geotextile which is provided as an anchor tube whereas on the other end you have got foundation mattress which is being laid using again HATE non-woven fabric. The incomet flex is again a sand mat which is used for sealing the top layer for erosion control. If you want to control the erosion on this downward slope, I have to provide a sand mat which seals off the top layer and protects the top layer from further erosion. This is one of the recent combination of geosynthetic tubes which has been used for breakwater with armor protection as you see on one side using a rock armor. Let us quickly look at different material characteristics which has been used in the modern construction practice for coastal protection structures. Geosynthetics or combination of woven and non-woven geotextiles. They actually hold a very high soil retention capacity combined with a high level of permeability. This prevents excessive loading caused by the hydraulic impact on such structures. They also possess natural appearance when placed on site as you see in this photograph. Now, I have got a geosynthetic tubes which has been placed on site and they actually merge with the elevation sea surface what you see in the grey colour. So, they get amalgamated with nature so that you may not even notice there is an artificial layer which has been provided as a protection layer for the coastal site as they get merged with the sea states. There are salient advantages of using this kind of new materials as coastal protection structures. Geotubes replace an expensive construction material like rocks that is one important advantage again by using a geotextile for coastal protection systems. Secondly, they are very well suitable for flexible type of coastal protection structures. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last lecture we saw a specific site which had a very high requirement of soil pore pressure which demands a very flexible system. In such cases I cannot use a gravity type rubble mount system which does not dissipate energy at all because of its rigidity. However, geotubes have found extensive replacements because they are very flexible type of coastal protection structures. They are alternative and modern replacement for conventional construction techniques for coastal protection structures in the recent past. They can also be used for widening existing groins which is also one of the great advantage. There is a photograph here which has been taken on a site where the existing groin which you see here has attempted to be widened using geotubes. The next application of modern construction material in ocean structures is actually dewatering of dredged material. We will talk about dredging in a separate module later. However, when the dredged material is collected, it is very important that the dredged material should be contained completely with dewatering arrangement. There are new methodologies which can be used for dewatering the dredged sludge 
using geotextile tubes which we will see now in detail application. Again the applications are recommended and been used as you see in the specific website of USCA. Dewatering of dredged material is very important for its effective and compact disposal because dredging is again a serious menace in case of beach nourishment, but however disposing the dredged material is also equally important. When the dredged material is voluminous because of water content present in it, then the compact disposal becomes a serious issue. So, it is very important that dewatering of this material should be carried out for its compact disposal. This shall address two problems, one the dredge disposal problem, secondly the handling capacity of the dredges, because if the volume of dredge sludge is very high and accumulative, you need to have large capacity dredges which are to be hired on the site. So, if you are able to dewater the dredge sludge and make it compact then the dredge disposal problem can be addressed in a very effective manner as well as the handling capacity of the dredgers can also be relatively reduced. Therefore, it is interesting that in the recent past one can see dewatering tubes have been used for clearing of the dredged material. Let us quickly see how this mechanism works. The mechanism consists of placing dewatering tubes of different sizes which are readily available in the market. These tubes actually are made of special opening size of geotextiles which are used to manufacture the dewatering tubes. These geotextiles by gravimetric drainage of the sludge also results in significant reduction of volume of the dredging material. However, you can interestingly note that the slurry alone is captured inside the geotextiles synthetic tube and the water escapes from the tube by the narrow pores present in the geotextile layers. This process makes it convenient to handle the dredging sludge and dispose it in a very compact manner. This is a photograph of a typical dewatering tube as you see here which has been laid. We will talk about the mechanism now. There are different stages of operation when you want to carry out dewatering of a dredged material. It is a four stage process as you now understand. The first stage is filling of the geotextile tube. The geotextile tube is filled up with processed dredging material which you want to dewater. The geotextile confines the solids only. During this process as water is escaping from the tube, a filter cake of the dredging sludge is formed at the inner surface of the geotube. Since the geotextiles enable water to drain completely but retain solid, during this process there is a possibility that the formed cake gets completely dried. So, a thorough dewatering happens in the second stage. In the third stage, we have a consolidation process where due to the process of desiccation water content of the accumulated dredge continues to decrease from the geotube. During this process there is a possibility of clogging. To avoid this problem there are certain polymers which are added as a pre mixture to the dredging sludge before the sludge is filled in the geotendric tubes. Then the fourth stage is disposal of this dewatered sludge which can be used for subsequent deposition. So, you can see here from this photograph before the geotubes are filled with dredging sludge for dewatering a drainage base as you see here needs to be prepared. The figure clearly shows the preparation of a water collection tray which has got different drainage arrangements from where the drained water is taken away from the site and such arrangements are provided all along its periphery and its corners of the drainage basin. This is a very interesting photograph taken on site where the geotube drainage water is clearly seen. You can see here only the dredge sludge is noted and the water has been completely percolated and drained off from the content. This is a schematic conceptual sketch 
which shows how dewatering takes place from the dredged material. When you fill up the dredged sludge inside this dewatering tube, because of the pores present in the tube, the water gets exit out from the tube, which compacts the sludge and forms a cake inside. This water, which is escaping from the dewatering tube, passes through a drainage layer, which is again laid over a non woven geotextile layer as a protection, and there is a flexible membrane layer which is housed between the non woven layers to protect this flexible membrane layer and this is the drainage arrangement what you see here which drains out the water from the dewatering tube. Of course, there are extensive number of dewatering drains available separately on the drainage area which exits out this water which is collected later and then disposed of safely. The photograph now you see here is a geo tube which is filled with dredging material which is ready for dewatering arrangement. This is placed on a drainage layer as you see here for dewatering and all these pores what you see here these are all nothing but the escape route for drained water to come out from the drainage layer. As we understand in recent development of construction materials which can be used for coastal protection structures as we saw in the last two lectures interestingly modern materials like geosynthetics have been widely applied and being practiced with different innovative design methodologies for coastal protection systems. Now, the fundamental question comes how do code classify different materials for offshore and ocean structures. If you look at the codal classification essentially looking at the property of the material the mechanical engineering point of view are very important. Mechanical properties are considered to be an important indices to study behavior of metals under different load combinations. If you look at different properties which are very important for selection of materials as recommended by the codes let us try to understand what are those properties which are important or the properties based on which code classifies material for construction purposes in marine environment. The foremost property what code generally looks at while classifying the material is the strength followed by which is hardness, toughness, elasticity, plasticity, brittleness, ductility and malleability. These properties are of course, described in terms of types of forces or stresses that the material must withstand and how they are resisted upon. There are different types of forces and stresses that act on material when they are housed in construction for offshore structures. Common types of stresses which are seen in material are the following compressive stresses, tensile stresses, shear, torsion, impact or a combination of these stresses such as fatigue. Now, let us see quickly what are the effects of marine environment on these materials because it is important to know what are the consequence of the marine environment on this material if we really know how to select the material for construction techniques in marine environment. Earlier if you look at the literature major application of material is only with surface ships. However, in new ocean systems they require and start demanding material with special characteristics. We have seen such examples in the past few lectures where geosynthetics, geotubes, woven textiles of geotextiles have been used for coastal protection structures and saline embankments. So, offshore drilling and production platforms which have been the constant innovation for placing them in ultra deep waters, surface buoys which have been also being currently used for wave energy generation devices, instrument platforms which have been used for constantly monitoring the performance of offshore structures under different sea states, submarine vehicles, auto AOVs, ROVs etcetera are very classical examples of new ocean systems which demand new types of construction material with special characteristics. If you summarize the environmental effects on material very quickly we will understand that the environment has 
serious effects on materials like chemical attacks, fatigue problems, stress effects, corrosion effects, biofouling effects. These are some serious chronological problems which environment imposes on materials in the marine structures. Therefore, a fundamental question comes to the mind is what should those basic property which is to be possessed by the material. You may wonder why we are talking about the properties of material as we have got address at the codal classification. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to understand first let us see what are those characteristics which are vital for selection of material then we see how the codes classify them based on these characteristics. So, let us have a fundamental question to be answered what should the material possess to qualify it for marine application. The materials must have the following properties which ensure basically the survivability of the material in case of any accidents that is for example, in case of any collision, in case of excessive loading due to hurricane or during unforeseen events. Note also that the underwater structures has to withstand heavy hydrostatic pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, it is interesting for all of us to understand and agree that structures are also exposed to a combination of earthquakes, hurricanes, scouring, typhoons etcetera when they are placed in marine environment. Therefore, thus materials are subjected to different types of loading require specific properties to sustain these loads. Hence, it is very common to agree upon that specific properties cannot be applied on an average to all kinds of material. So, the material selection must be thoroughly based on application on which the material has got to be used for marine environment because the forces, the sea states, the conditions and the effect of environment on the material differ as they have been used in different locations. Let us look at the selection of materials now very quick. In the first module, we discussed about this in detail, but to have the advantage of the viewers, we are summarizing it very fast in this lecture. So, that we will also cross correlate this with the international codes and the selection criteria given by the international courts. Ladies and gentlemen, we all agree that there exists a close relationship between the selection of material and the type of structure wherein they have been used for construction. Various specifications, codes, regulatory agencies are used only as a guide in the application of material in marine environment. For example, ABS which is American Bureau of Shipping this recommends use of material for surface ships. Different codes and regulations are desirable so that one can consult a wide variety of codes for application of them in offshore structures. However, it is not a requirement since it may be a limit of selection of material. So, the following factors should be considered while we select material for marine applications. Physical and chemical properties of materials cost factor, fabrication facilities, expected maintenance may be important factors which we must consider before we select the material for offshore applications. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, following factors should also be considered. Materials should be chosen such that the catastrophic failure should be avoided. Materials should withstand hazards including operational error besides meeting the design requirements. Now, let us quickly summarize what are those design considerations which one must understand before selecting material for marine application based on international codes. In selecting a material for marine application the following physical characteristics are very important in design point of view. For example, yield strength is the foremost consideration one must think of. Secondly, will be the Young's modulus because this will govern the extent of deflections and bending moment coming in the structural system. Of course, Poisson's ratio is important as we are talking about multi axis loading analysis for offshore structures. Fatigue performance is very important because there is always a high probability the forces get reversed, though the magnitude may not be higher, but the cycle of reversal is very high in the random scenario in sea states. 
we also have to have a enough fracture resistance of the material as one of the important consideration for using it in offshore structures. Kindly note that the physical characteristics which are presented and given in the literature are based on the data taken from a standard specimen. However, the specimen what you use for construction may differ, the structure loading in the actual environment differs markedly from those of any test requirements and test conditions conducted in a control laboratory conditions. So, what does it mean? How does it affect the selection of material? Most importantly, this warrants change in allowable stress levels for various ocean conditions. However, one easy and simple methodology which has been used in the design is that we can increase the thickness of the material or selecting appropriate factor of safety can handle this kind of change in allowable stress levels which are caused because of various ocean conditions that is one of the interesting design requirement which we generally follow in design of offshore structures while selecting materials basically for them. Steel has been a very predominantly common material which has been successfully used in offshore selection materials. It is based on composition steel are classified as carbon, low alloy or stainless steel based on manufacturing methods like electric furnace or open hearth basic oxygen material manufacturing method we can classify steel based on finishing one can classify it as hot rolling or cold rolling based on microstructure as ferritic, paralytic and martensitic one can classify steel based on required strength level specified in different standards we can specify and classify steel for application. Of course, based on heat treatment like annealing, quenching and tempering can classify steel and of course, very famously and very commonly steel is also classified based on the product form as bar, plates, sheets, strips, tubes or any other structural shape which are very commonly used for marine applications. Now, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we look at the codes, what are the recommendations given by the codes, how international codes advise engineers to select material for marine environment. Structural steel plates for offshore structures differ because of the varying fields of application and location. Four major standards exist besides the shipbuilding standards for selection of structural steel plates for offshore construction. The standards like PREN 10225, BS 7191 and the material data sheets of North Sock are primarily applicable in Europe and Norway or North Sea which can be used as one of the primary code reference for selection of material. However, American Petroleum Institute standards can also be used essentially and predominantly in American and Asian areas. Different standards may also be used in different areas, there is no watertight requirement of selecting a specific standard for a specific location. In fact, in some parts the standards corresponds to each other, in some class some of them refer to the same argument repeatedly. For example, the North Sox standard refers to PRN 10225 which itself is based on BS 7191. So, there has been a mutual agreement between different international codes which has been used commonly for selection of material for offshore structures. More interestingly as an engineer we must agree that more the standards approach each other more commonly and agree upon it is easier that the steel fabricator to develop together with the engineering companies which can use or which can result in improved steel grades in a more economical manner. So, it is always advisable and better to have a mutual and common agreement of certain properties of material to be used for offshore structures which has been mutually agreed upon by different codes as listed here. Now, the fundamental question which is coming to our mind is how codes classify steel for offshore applications. Steel groups are done using APA RP2A working stress design method. Steel are grouped according to the strength level and welding characteristics. For example, group 1, group 2 and group 3. Group 1 steel specified minimum yield strength of 280 mega Pascal or lesser than that and also the carbon equivalency is about 0.4 percent. Talk about group 2, it varies from 280 to 360 mega Pascal. The carbon equivalence 
is about 0.45 or higher. Whereas, group 3 is meant for high strength steel whose yield strength is higher than 360 mega Pascal. Of course, you have got to recommend certain special welding procedures if you want to investigate the fatigue related problems in this particular type of steel. Steel structures are most commonly used in offshore structural system. Strength is not the only criteria. Steel structures should also have superior low temperature toughness for the base metal and the welded joints to avoid essentially what we see as brittle failure. For this besides charpy impact properties, the material should also possess good C tot capacity. C tot is nothing but crack, tip, opening, displacement characteristics. C tot is one of the important property of a family of fracture mechanics that measures the resistance of a material to growing of a specific crack or to see how crack propagates when it is already initiated. Let us look at toughness of the material steel for application of offshore structures. The word toughness is used to quite understand two different formats. One is impact toughness, other is fracture toughness. Impact toughness is an energy measurement which is generally given in joules or feet pounds and commonly relates to char p v naught test. Whereas, the fracture toughness is calculated value based on the critical stress intensity factor crap tip opening displacement test or what we call J integral test in the literature. Toughness may be loosely described as a measure or a capacity of the resistance to failure in the presence of crack, notch or similar stress concentrators. High toughness therefore, is generally recognized as a desirable property for offshore steel. A high toughness material is one where a considerable amount of plastic deformation is required at a crick, at a crack tip before the crack can be made to advance further. Conversely, if the application of stress causes elastic failure of the atomic bonds at the crack tip, relative little energy of deformation is involved and therefore, the resulting failure will be a brittle fracture. Steel also classifies based on A P R P 2 A W S D. Steel are also grouped further based on the notch toughness characteristics or the impactors as class A, class B and class C. Class C do not recommend any impactor specified in the literature of A P R P. They are used for primary structural members which involves limited thickness, moderate forming, low restraint, modest stress concentration and generally applicable in locations where there is a quasi static loading. Some examples are piling, jacket braces and legs, deck beams and legs etcetera. Whereas, class A steel can be used even at sub freezing temperatures. That is a wide range of variety of three classification of steel which are grouped essentially on the notch toughness requirements as recommended by APRP for steel selection for offshore structures. Thank you.